to another simple loading case from statics that's going to become very useful as we move on so again we're going to choose simply supported beam Oops. and again this simply supported beam will have pin support at the left hand side and a roller support at the right hand side so simply supported and we're going to have total length of this beam is going to be L and now we're going to subject this beam to a uniformly distributed load or UDL and we're going to use the simplified method of drawing a UDL with these kind of bubble shapes and we'll call this UDL or the intensity of this UDL W which has units of newtons per meter where the per meter means going in the x direction along the axis of the beam so again we're going to follow the procedure we did before and what we're going to do is calculate the reactions directions and reactions generate the bending moment functions get a maximum bending moment and sketch the deflected shape of this beam so to get the reactions so we'll take Some of the forces in the y direction. Quick sketch of the free body diagram. This is the two reactions and the UDL. And the UDL can now be represented by a single load, which would be W times L. So the intensity W multiplied by the length will give us a total load. So sum of the forces, and let's just R, A, Y, R, B, Y. So we're using A and B for the ends of the beam. And sum of the forces in the Y direction, R, A, Y plus R, B, Y is equal to W, L. Therefore, R, A, Y equals r b y due to symmetry which equals w l upon two so now we can proceed to write the bending moment equation so we can draw so for the bending moment draw a quick free body diagram doesn't matter how far into your studies you are you should always draw a free body diagram and so we have WL upon 2 as the reaction force at the left hand side. Now we have an equivalent load. And first, before we do an equivalent load, we're going to have a distance to where we've made a cut in the beam X. So this equivalent load now would be W times X. And then that means that this distance here is x upon 2. And this distance here is also x upon 2. And we're then going to draw the moment, the internal moment where we made our cut. So m of x. So taking moments now about this point x where we've made the cut, we're going to have positive anti-clockwise moment m of x plus we're going to have a positive moment about there which is going to be w x multiplied by the lever arm x upon 2 and going in the opposite direction so i'm going to take it to the right hand side of the equation straight away will be w l upon 2 multiplied by the lever arm 2 of x 
So we're going to do some rearranging, tidying up here. And so m of x equals wlx upon 2 minus wx squared upon 2. And that's our bending moment function. Now we can find our maximum bending moment, which for this loading condition is going to occur in the middle of the beam. So we know that m that m max occurs at l upon 2 and we're going to substitute that into our bending moment function so m max or m at l upon 2 is going to be equal to wl multiplied by l upon 2 divided by 2 minus w l upon 2 all squared upon 2 so let's multiply these bits out so we get w l squared upon 4 minus w l squared and we've got to multiply this 2 also has to be squared be careful with that one w l squared upon 4 multiply the 2 that already exists on the bottom minus w l squared upon 8 so let's so we have 2 w l squared upon 8 minus a w l squared upon 8 gives us the result we were expecting which equals the m max is w l squared upon 8 and we can see that this is quadratic function of the length and the bending moment function in general is also quadratic in the distance x measured from the support condition as shown on our free body diagram so it's a quadratic function so we're going to draw that so the bending moment diagram let's draw the bending moment diagram and so we have a quadratic function it starts at zero And that's a quick sketch of what the bending moment diagram we have zero zero and in the center we have wl squared upon eight so finally just to finish this little problem we're going to have a sketch of the deformed shape and let's use the line tool so what do we know about the structure we know the structure won't deflect on the left hand side it won't deflect on the right hand side but we'll have some deflection in the center due to the loading we know also that we're going to have some rotation of the beam at the supports and we have in this case another bit of information that due to symmetry that the supports or the deflection will be horizontal in the center of the beam and we can join these known bits of information together to draw us our deflected shape.